The Lord be with you, and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this 17th Sunday after Pentecost, we follow the order of morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 587 in Lutheran Service Book, I Know My Faith is Found. I know my faith is founded on Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, and this my faith confessing, unmoved I stand on his sure word. Our reason cannot fathom the truth of God profound, who trusts in human wisdom, relies on shifting ground. God's word is all sufficient, it makes divinely sure. And trusting in its wisdom, my faith shall rest secure. Increase my faith, dear Savior, for Satan seeks by night and day to rob me of this treasure and take my hope of bliss away. But, Lord, with you beside me, I shall be undismayed. And led by your good spirit, I shall be unafraid. Abide with me, O Savior, a firmer faith bestow. Then I shall bid defiance to every evil foe. In faith, Lord, let 
me serve you, though persecution, grief, and pain should seek to overwhelm me. Let me a steadfast trust retain, and then at my departure, Lord, take me home to you. Your riches to inherit, as all you said holds true. In life and death, Lord, keep me until your heaven I gain, where I, by your great mercy, the end of fate attain. The epistle reading appointed for this day is from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1. Paul. An apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come. But woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, Say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text this day is from the Old Testament reading, the book of Habakkuk. Chapters 1 and 2. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. O Yahweh, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. 
and Yahweh answered me, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. The prophet's complaint is clear and familiar. Life stinks. Look at the world around us. It's filled with dishonesty, depravity, poverty, injustice, conflict, violence, wars of words and wars of weapons, mass destruction. Civilization is falling apart. And where is God in all this? He seems to be ignoring us. But if we can see the world's problems, then surely God can see them. And he should be able to fix those problems. And my problems, too. But I don't see him fixing anything. Do you? Why does God seem to be silent? Maybe the problems of the world are so big that they're beyond his power. Or maybe God has given up and doesn't care about us anymore. Well, if those things aren't true, then when is he going to do something? Or in the words of Habakkuk, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Take heart. God is not silent. He does answer us, even though he may not say exactly what we want to hear. For God calls us to live by faith. Live by faith doesn't seem very helpful when destruction and violence are before me. The ravages of war, the bloodshed on our nation's streets, the attacks reported on the local news, these get closer and closer to us. Will God step in before I get hurt? Live by faith also doesn't sound so great when strife and contention arise. These days, people insult us, we insult them right back. It seems we like to fight. And we take on all comers, people online, our neighbors, our friends, our family members. Some of us even fight with ourselves, taking on the confusions that rage within. This is the iniquity, the guilt of sin around us and in us. It's easy to forget that part, isn't it? We forget that sin abounds in our own hearts and minds. Oh, we'll cry out for God, to God for help against what's outside. But do we cry out for God's help with what's going on inside our hearts and our minds and our souls? How long will it be until God hears us, answers us, saves us? Habakkuk waited, pa waited patiently for God's answer. <clears throat> he said, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. No doubt Habakkuk had already been struggling with these questions. No doubt he had already searched the scriptures. Now, meditating on that word of God, he waits. He doesn't make up his own answer that sounds good. He listens for God's answer. And Yahweh answered me, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. God's answer is no secret. He tells Habakkuk to write it down, make it clear, put it on a billboard, big enough for people to read it as they run by. Tell others what God is about to tell you. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. God's answer is coming, but it's waiting for the right time. Now, from our perspective, that right time has come and gone. God's late. But God assures us his answer is right on schedule. There is no delay involved. God's answer to our needs will be here for us at just the right moment. Habakkuk took God at his word and waited patiently and faithfully. But Habakkuk was preaching around 600 years before Jesus was born. And at that time, things weren't quite, quite ready yet. Like a huge Broadway production, there was background scenery to build and put into place. Actors had to be prepared for their roles. The attention of the world had to be drawn to the place where God would draw aside the curtain and reveal his answer to our prayers. So Alexander the Great conquered the world, and soon everybody was able to speak the same language, Greek. 
The Roman Empire took over and established a system of roads and shipping routes that allowed people and news to travel quickly and freely. The political situation in Palestine was tainted with enough corruption and intrigue that it was possible for an innocent man to be put to death. The religious atmosphere of the age became one of hope mixed with skepticism. A self-righteous group called the Pharisees controlled many of the people. And they wouldn't stand for an upstart rabbi from Galilee who challenged them, calling them breakers of God's law, even as he preached God's mercy to the outcasts and the sinners of society. All this is going on, and we're still left, left crying, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? But God has heard and answered. For when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Yes, God sent his own son into this world in human flesh. <clears throat> that son lived the perfect life that you and I cannot live, in spite of the sinful world around him. Then that sinful world dragged him out of Jerusalem, nailed him to a cross, and watched him die. Little did they know, that his death was paying for the sins of every person who has ever lived and ever will live. Little did they know that God the Father would, not, would, would raise his son from the dead, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Little did they know that this death and resurrection of Jesus Christ was the very help against sin we needed, given long before we would ever have asked God for God's help. So Jesus came. He came, he lived, he died, he rose, and he ascended into heaven. And now, like Habakkuk, we wait. We wait for the vision to come. We wait for the promise to be fulfilled. We wait for this Jesus to come again in glory at the end of days. And we've been waiting for what? 2,000 years? Seems to us like God is late again. But the words of the prophet assure us, if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. True, some people just won't wait. They want things their own way, and they want them now. Of such a person, God says, behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. And there it is. God's call for us to live by faith. That's how we're to continue on in this life, by faith. Trusting in God, trusting in God's promises, trusting that God is with us, looking out for us, giving us the help we need when we need it. Trust like that is tough. I can't muster it myself. I don't think you can either. We'd want some proof first. But if we had proof, then we wouldn't be living by faith, would we? No, this faith is not something you or I pulled out of our sinful hearts and weak minds. This faith was given to us, created in us by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, working in and through the Word. This faith is a gift, God's gift to us. And it's important to see that this faith is fed. That's why it's essential we gather in the house of God each week to hear God's word, to receive his absolution and our Lord's Supper. It's vital because the righteous shall live by his faith. Without this faith, we will not live. We won't just be searching for answers and grasping for help. Without this faith, we'll be dead for eternity. But it's by grace, the grace of God, that we have this faith. In baptism, he made us part of the church his church, his family. He calls and gathers us around his words and gifts which feed our faith and our hope for God's help. We still ask, O Yahweh, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Our Lord doesn't tell us how long it will be before we'll see his help. But he assures us that he is here helping us, whether we see it or not. Our Lord doesn't tell us how long it will be until he comes, but he does tell us that he is coming. So we live by faith until he comes. And when he comes, by faith we will live. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus.
We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, by your grace hear the prayers of your church. Grant that those things which we ask in faith we may receive through your bountiful mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Receive our thanks that you preserve your word in this world of uncertainty, confusion, and lies. Grant us to love your law and rejoice in your promises continually, that we may live in your peace. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, remember our pastors whom you have called to a holy calling. Embolden them in their testimony concerning our Lord Jesus, and strengthen them by your power to courageously suffer for the gospel and guard the good deposit entrusted to them. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, preserve us from paralyzed law and perverted justice. Strengthen those whom you have placed in authority to govern wisely, that, they might live free, that we might live free of strife and contention. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of all grace, remember those who suffer from violence, strife, illness, or affliction. Heal and deliver them according to your will. And when your answer seems slow, strengthen them by Christ's righteousness to await your timing and live by faith. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive our thanks for the callings you have given us. Grant that we might rejoice to labor in service to you until you gather us to your banquet table in heaven. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. The Lord be with you.